Hey everybody, this is Debbie Levitt, Director of Marketing at InkFrog, with another video on how to use various aspects of InkFrog. Today we're going to take a look at images. So once you log in, just click on images along the top. And I have one loaded in here for fun, but we're going to learn how to do the whole process. So start by creating your own folder if you'd like. And I, it's not obvious at first, but it's these plus and minus buttons over here. That's going to be where you're going to create a new folder. So let's say I create a folder, and I call this one um, item images. Just hit return. There it is. I can click on that folder. It'll show me nothing is in there. So now it's time to upload our pictures. And we've got three choices. So let's walk through these really quickly. I'll start with FTP since that's the one you guys might use the least. But let me at least explain it. Before you can FTP to InkFrog, you have to click here just once to create your FTP account with InkFrog. A window will then come up when you want to, you'll then click here and you'll learn about the login and your username. Your password is the same as your InkFrog account. You then need to use your FTP application to upload the images you want to upload. Then come back here and click import. I had a few people say, I clicked import and nothing happened. Well that's because first you have to go into your FTP program, log in with the information we give you upload your pictures, and then come back here to synchronize between the website and what you uploaded to the server. Now what about if we want to just use the web upload? These are really great for doing pictures one at a time. So let's say I want to load up this picture, and let's say I want to load up this picture. <clears throat> this is good for one at a time, especially if you just have a few pictures, or you want to overwrite something you've uh, loaded up before because it has the same name. Don't forget to click Overwrite Duplicates. Um, you pick what folder you want it to go into, so I can have it go into Item Images, and then I could say Upload. That would be a really simple way of doing it. Now what about the Java and ActiveX uploader? That will probably be some favorite for you guys. Some people ask me about rotating images before you upload them. Well this has a built-in rotate. So you can see I just click it and it rotates, click again, rotate, click again, rotate. So if you need to rotate a couple of pictures, this is an easy way to do that. I can select all three of these. And all I have to do is drag them down here. Now they're going to be uploaded. Now I can see over here they're going to be uploaded to my item images folder. If I want to overwrite something, I can. Some people have asked me about watermarking. I would say don't get too carried away with watermarking. First of all, watermarking doesn't stop a really jerky person from stealing your pictures. Second of all, this watermark will put text in the bottom right corner. And a lot of people know that that can usually easily be removed. So this really isn't the way to assure that your images are going to uh, not be stolen. If you have a problem with people stealing your images, my advice is um, batch watermark from Photoshop Elements or someone said Picasa. Um, buy from and then your eBay name. So let's say your eBay name is Inkfrog. Uh, and it's not, but let's pretend. So I would say buy from InkFrog, and I would watermark that in a really prominent place where nobody can just remove it with a little bit of Photoshop knowledge. People may steal the picture if it says InkFrog on it, and you might actually even get someone to think that you must be friends with the seller who stole your picture. Oh, look, they share pictures. But if someone else is, no way is someone else going to take your picture when it tells people to buy from somebody else. That's the real way to do watermarking, if you are concerned about people stealing your images, and that's what I suggest. Now I can come over here and click Upload, and watch as these get uploaded. When it's complete, we'll get a little message saying it's complete, so we know for sure. That should come. Here we go. Upload complete. I can X out of this pop-up. And now here we go. My item images folder has three pictures. Now InkFrog does have some image adjustment uh, things that we can do by clicking adjust. So the first thing I could do is maybe I want to crop this one like this. I can come up here and say crop. And then maybe we want to change the picture a little bit. We've got size, rotation, brightness, and compression. So let's say I want to make it a little bit brighter. Maybe I feel like when I took that picture it was a little dark. I can say apply. There we go. It just brightened up. 
And now what's compression? Well, for those of you not familiar with that, the more you compress a JPEG, the smaller the file becomes, but the more you start to lose quality. So in this case, the higher the number, the higher quality file your, yours will be, but the bigger it will be, but maybe that's not such a bad thing. So I'm going to go to 100, and I'm going to say apply. And now it says my file is 51K. You might say, hey, I think that's too big. OK, well, let's bring the compression down a little bit. Apply. 19K. That's a great size. And I don't think we've lost any quality in the picture. So I definitely want to keep this. And if I want to keep it, don't hit reset, don't hit cancel, hit done. Now what happens is when you first get back to your pictures page in Inkfrog, it's still going to show the old one. That's just kind of cached. It's going to sit there for a while like that. But if I go and click on my picture, it's going to show me the one that I revised. So don't worry. Your revision is there. It's just going to take a while for the preview to catch up. So this is pretty much what you can do with images. We can sort them by when they were modified. We can sort them by their size, by their name. We can select individual ones. We can select all of them. And if you want to get the URL for one of them, because uh, let's say you want to write some HTML around it or something like that, I can just say, uh, let's see, where is it? Copy URL. So here is the URL for this uh, image. Note that Inkfrog doesn't rename images, so your path for all of your images on Inkfrog will always start the same. Images.inkfrog.com slash pick slash your account name, mine's Debbie27, and then the exact name of your picture the way you loaded it up off your source. And that way, if you need to uh, do a bunch of pictures, you know that that is always going to be the uh, beginning of the path of your URL. So uh, that's pretty much it. We can check these off and we can trash them. Uh, we can just say delete. We can move them to different folders. And we can search them by looking for uh, names, the name of the picture. But these don't have very good names. So that's uh, the story on pictures. So uh, come on back. Keep watching our videos as you learn about other areas of Inkfrog. Thanks.